Each day, millions of Americans travel the nation's skyways using commercial airliners. Between July 1970 and July 1985, the National Transportation Safety Board says 404 people died in at least five air crashes caused by an especially brutal freak of nature called wind shear. On a hot day in August of 1985, 137 people were added to that list. The following reenactment of Delta Flight 191, scheduled Fort Lauderdale to Los Angeles via Dallas-Fort Worth, is based on a true story. You got some big doings planned for your birthday tonight, Bill? Well, I'm sorry, boy. Someone said today's your birthday. Yeah, that's right. Are you going to celebrate? Nah, I'm just going back to my Uncle Darrell's house. I'm going to say to celebrate until next week when Terry and the kids get here from Mississippi. How many kids do you have? Two. <laughs> that's Terry. That's Barbara. That's William Jr. Being without them on your birthday sure ain't much fun. Well, I tell you, just finally landing a good job and being able to bring my family here is enough of a birthday present for me. Anyway, I get to talk to them tonight on the phone. That'll be nice. Yeah, well. well, happy birthday and uh, welcome to Texas, Bill. Thanks. Promise me that you're gonna have a good time. Do you think your father would feel going to Las Vegas for a bridge tournament was frivolous? No, he wouldn't. Daddy would just be happy to know that you're happy. Listen, Candace. I made a new will, and I put it in the mail to you. Mom, stop it. It was sweeter than the trade with us. It really was. It's going to be a good connection, too. We get to Dallas and an hour later run our way to West Virginia. Oh, terrific. It's going to be a great weekend. You'll love my family. Thanks. Weather looks pretty good in route, Bill. 
All we got some low scattered clouds and a nine knot breeze. Good. Yeah, just push it over. Don't be so nervous, Lucille. I could have a cigarette, please. You don't smoke. I don't fly either, but there's a first time for everything. What would that be? Uh, that would be second from the back, just to your right. Smoke? Yes. I'll see you healthy folks in Dallas. I'm sitting back there in a smoke-filled room. Delta 191 Heavy, you are cleared for takeoff. Have a good flight. Roger, Fort Lauderdale Tower. This is Delta 191 Heavy. Rolling. Power set. Sure did. Emergency medical technician is here with my trauma kit. You giving up being a sound technician? No, I figure I'll get twice as much work. If I ain't working as a sound technician, I can always work in first aid. Uh-huh. Very clever, Bob. I thought so. You know, if we hurry, we can beat the traffic out to DFW. Looks like we got another storm rolling in. Big one. Yeah. See you on Monday. Yeah. Have a good weekend. You too, Bill. And happy birthday. Thanks. See you later. Oh, uh, yeah. This is Encinas at the National Weather Service. Yeah, I tell Fort Worth that everything looks pretty normal. I'm gonna break for an early lunch. I won't be long. Pretty heavy duty weather up ahead. Roger that. Fort Worth Center, this is Delta 191 Heavy. Go ahead, 191 Heavy. Yeah, we're heading into a line of weather along the Texas Louisiana Gulf Coast. We'd like to alter course, heading more northerly toward Texarkana. Roger, you are cleared to deviate. Roger, 191 Heavy, thank you. Hello, folks, it's Captain Connors. Uh, we're going to alter course a little bit. We're right now about 70 miles east of Dallas. And we're making this diversion to give you a little bit smoother ride. We'll be arriving uh, DFW about 20 minutes late. Thank you. Don't worry. 
This is nothing out of the ordinary. We're always late flying into Dallas. Attention, please. Arrival of Delta Airlines Flight 191 from Fort Lauderdale will be delayed approximately 20 minutes. Excuse me. Yes. Is there a problem? No, just the rain and some traffic. Oh, it's probably my husband's fault. Your husband? Yeah, he's on that plane. He's always late. Oh. <laughs> Delta 191 Heavy, this is Fort Worth Air Traffic Control Center. Center maintain 10,000 feet. The altimeter is 29901. Suggest now heading of 250 to join the Blue Ridge 010 radio and track inbound. We have a good area for you to go through. Uh, Delta 191 Heavy, uh, I'm looking at a thunderstorm cell at about a heading of 255. It's a pretty good sized cell. I'd rather not go through it. I'd rather go around it one way or another. Can't take you to the south, 191 Heavy. Got a line of departures to the south. I've had about 60 aircraft go through this area out here, 10 to 12 miles wide. They're getting a good ride. Well, I still see a cell at about a heading of uh, 240. Okay, when I can, I'll turn you into Blue Ridge. It will be about the 010 radio. Roger, understand. Must be planning to turn us before we get to that area. I better put the girls down. Cabin attendants, please prepare the cabin for landing. Oh, so, so. Are you finished? Yes. Thanks. Could you just put your table up and your seat back up for the landing? Sure, the landing, sir. In a few more minutes. Regional approach, Delta 191, uh, going through 11,000 feet. Delta 191 Heavy, fly heading 235. Roger, 191 Heavy, turning to 235. Delta 191 Heavy, descend and maintain 7,000. Uh, Delta 191, continuing descent to 7,000. Delta 191 Heavy, turn left to 10 degrees, reduce airspeed 180 knots. Delta 191, turning 10 degrees left, reducing to 180. 10 degrees flaps. 10 degrees flaps coming. Just the flaps. There's nothing to be worried about. Must be bad. It's been raining like crazy. Nice way to spend your birthday sitting in a traffic jam. Well, have him call me when he gets in, okay? I sure will, honey. Okay, bye. Yeah, get me someone at the Fort Worth Forecast Office. Hey, is that a water spout off the end of the runway? 
Sure looks like one, doesn't it? Jack, I just got a call from Encinas down to Stephenville about a formation he's been watching just north of DFW. Yeah, I've been watching it, too. But I don't think there's any ground truth to it. Go ahead and put out a statement, but it doesn't warrant an aviation weather warning. Delta 191 Heavy, reduce speed to 170, turn left 270. Delta 191 Heavy, turning left 270, reducing to 170. Take a look, sitting right on the final approach to runway 17 left. Looks like a little shower. We're going to get our plane washed. What? We're going to get our airplane washed. Looks like a dust storm out there. <laughs> or a heavy rain. Oh my God. Don't worry. There won't be any problems. Planes always take off and land in the rain. Sure they do, I believe you. Mm. <sighs> Looks like it's gonna get a little rough. Lightning coming out of that cloud. Where? Right ahead of us. This is 191 Heavy out here in the rain. Delta 191 Heavy, this is DFW Tower. 17 left, clear to land. Wind 0, 090 0 degrees at 5 knots, gusting to 15 knots. Roger. 191 Heavy, clear to land. Thank you. Cloud attendants, we are clear to land. Please take your seats. Thank you. It won't be long. We're almost there now. The 191 heavy maintain 150 knots. Roger, 191. Reducing to 150. Gear down. Watch your speed. Damn. Hang on to it. Watch your speed. There it is. You just dropped 20 knots. Push it up. Push it way up. Way I'm up. trying.
emergency rescue. This is DFW Tower. We have an airliner crashed and burning off runway 17 left. Hello. Yes, this is Art Wagner. Okay, what do we have? Do we have survivability? What kind of plane? It can't be an L-1011. They don't crash. They're crash-proof. I'll be there in 40 minutes. We just lost an L-1011 with 163 people on board. They don't think there are any survivors. <laughs> Sam, Sam, you couldn't be more wrong. No, hang on, hey, hold it now, just settle for a moment. I wrote that brief myself, submitted it to the appeals court. Well, you've heard the Mr. wrong... Mr. Ayers. Word. Hang on a second. There's been a serious crash at the airport. It's an L-1011. I have to get back to you. L-1011. You better cancel a Peterson meeting. Yes, sir. This is Jack Ayers, Emergency Volunteer Services. There's been an accident at DFW. Now, mobilize all your paramedic units immediately. That's right. Billy, you better call Linda. Tell her I won't be home for dinner. Yes, sir. I'll take care of it. Parkland Emergency, Beth Mancini speaking. What? When? Uh, how soon? All right. It's been a crash at DFW. Notify the burn unit. Uh-oh. Ed, we're expecting any number of critical burn cases starting in 10 minutes. Mobilize disaster services. Eric, have you heard? Yeah, any word on how many? No, we're alerting the staff. We've only got 27 physicians on duty. Yeah, well, you better start calling right away. There's no telling how long it'll take them to get back here. It's still rush hour. I know.
You're going to be okay.
Vulcan 11 is a jumbo jet capable of carrying 302 passengers and 12 crew. But we don't know at this hour how full the plane actually was. Delta officials have thus far made no official comment, but we do expect a statement within the hour. What remains most disturbing to us and perhaps to everyone is the cause of the crash. For that, we go to Ann Wimberly, live on Highway 114, who has this report. Uh, uh, yeah, a uh, service department, People please. Speculating the crash was caused by a what time? Of nature called a wind shear. Well, is there anyone left who can tell me what time William Mayberry left? He works in the service department. Oh. Okay. Well, thanks anyway. The man behind him was not so lucky. Still as yet unidentified, a man driving a gray Toyota was killed when the plane crushed his car. Several motorists on Highway 114 at the time reported seeing the plane crash seconds later. Oh, Lord. It collided Jesus. into two water tanks, bursting into an enormous mushroom-shaped fireball before it came to a final rest 200 yards beyond the tanks. Plenty of it. Excuse me. Uh, Sir, can we just ask you a few questions? questions? What do you uh, call somebody who's working on this? Sir, can we just ask you a few questions? Sir, can we just ask you a few questions? Sir, can we just ask you a few questions? Are you from the Sir, Dallas area? Susan, I'm at the airport. Pete's plane went down. They don't know. They say they've taken a lot of people to the hospital, so that's a good sign. Danny, he was coming home early to see me. Please, I have to get out there. All I can tell you is that we are compiling a list of passengers and comparing it with a list of people who are arriving in the hospitals so that we can begin to contact the relatives. We'll be checking later for any further statements from the Delta officials. With us on the field regarding the crash of Flight 191 here at Dallas Fort Worth Airport. The plane, a Delta Airlines. Mommy, isn't Daddy on a plane? There was a plane crash. Where, honey? I don't know. It's on TV now. Dallas Fort Worth Airport at 5.49 p.m. 
Well, so far there has been no official comment on the cause of the Was crash. Was that Daddy's plane? Several witnesses reported severe winds and flashes of lightning just prior to the jumbo jet's ill-fated descent. <laughs> Burn unit. When I first got out there, I didn't see anything that remotely resembled an aircraft, except for the tail section. I've had all this training to learn how to save people, and here I was walking through dozens and dozens of people for whom it was too late. Yeah, send them down one. I only found one person alive out there. Although most of the passengers are now feared to have lost their lives. Some of the passengers escaped with only minor injuries and remained at the scene of the crash, helping to pull others from the wreckage. What is not known at this hour is exactly how Look, many survived. Look, who's dead? Airport officials have informed us that at this moment, National Transportation <laughs> Safety Board investigators are flying here tonight and are expected to arrive. Hey, right away, please. Look this way. What do you guys do? Do you have a name on the guy? Second and third degree burns over 80% of his body. Got a name on him? Hamilton. Nick Hamilton. I don't, I don't think he'll make it. Just get him up to burn. Stat. Can you, members of the press, please just move to one side. Mr. Grace, how many survivors have been brought in so far? Well, as of now, we've received 14 passengers from the flight. We're expecting some more. A few others have been taken to Harris Hospital in Irving Community. Do you have the personnel to handle additional victims? Oh, you bet. We've already activated our emergency disaster plan. Some 50 doctors and twice as many nurses. Mr. Grace, is there anything that the public can do to help? Should we make an appeal for blood? Yeah, I think we're going to need it. You won't believe it. They pushed back the arrival time on Nick's flight another hour. <laughs> oh, we probably should have stayed home. He said he was going to take the bus. I'm going to go ask what's going on, okay? Hi. Uh, my son's on that flight from Dallas. How come it's so late? They're having some problems in Dallas. Uh, was your son's flight originating from there? I was making a connection. He was flying from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to Dallas, and he was catching a flight from Dallas here to Denver. And uh, what was your son's name? Hamilton. Nick Hamilton. I'll see what I can find out. Thanks. Can you wait here a moment? Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton, there's been an accident in Dallas. Your son's plane has crashed. Oh, oh my God. He survived. He's been hospitalized in serious condition. He's at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. How badly has he been hurt? I wish I could tell you more. That's, that's all I know. This can't be happening. Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton, there is a flight leaving in 45 minutes. We can get you on it if you'd like to go. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go. especially critical of his recent threat to dissolve the National Assembly, 
the Philippines' only elected ruling body. Spokesmen for the president were quoted as saying that Marcos was confident that he would win resoundingly if elections were to be held today. Allegations of corruption and continued outrage over the 1983 assassination of Benigno Aquino have prompted an impeachment resolution which is headed for the Philippine Assembly floor next week. Oh, Mom. Philippines since 1964. At least 92 passengers are now confirmed dead in the crash. The burns are minor, but she's got some very serious internal injuries. Get her up to surgery now. Flashed to the sides, you see? It looks surreal. I, I I thought for a minute. Yeah, I know how you feel. Where are the rest of them? I don't know. All I know is we gotta keep on looking. Can't think about it. survivor just come over and stay with the kids I don't want to panic okay you kids you eat all your dinner Wanda's coming over from next door to stay with you for a while she'll fix you some dessert where are you going mom I won't be gone long you'll be good now okay bye bye He's all right, Sandra. I know he's all right. <laughs> he was scared to death of blood. This is his first time. Go on, you get down there and call me. There's some ice cream in the freezer for the kids. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Wanda, don't let him watch TV. What's wrong? There was a crash at the airport. And Sally's plane? Mom's trying to find out. They won't tell me anything. Hello? Hello? Has the flight from Fort Lauderdale come in yet? Well, I, I don't know the number. What's the number? 191. 191. What the hell difference does it make who this is? Is it in or not? You don't show anything. Look, ma'am, don't snowball me. I've been flying for too many years. I've never heard that a plane comes in, but to who knows when? All right. Sorry, they won't tell me anything. They're just giving me the runaround. Fire units and other rescue units were on the scene within minutes after the accident, despite heavy winds and rain which hampered their first efforts. Flight 191 from Fort Lauderdale was on its final approach when an unexpected drop in altitude caused the plane to lose control and crash short of its assigned runway. Those who survived the crash were taken to area hospitals, but from the... Al Thompson, Alex Thompson, has he been admitted? I'm sorry. What? 
There is no Alex Thompson on the list of survivors. I'm sorry. Maybe he wasn't on the plane at all. Maybe he missed the plane and took another flight. Maybe. Uh, down in the cafeteria, the airline set up a room for relatives, and uh, airline personnel might have more information for you. I'm going to your... No, no. Excuse me. Ma'am. Hello? Yes, this is Candace Kaiser. Nothing at all? She isn't on any list? Does that mean she... Yes, I want to come to Dallas. Okay, I'll be ready. Um, listen, my sister Karen, I can't find her. Maybe you could help. Excuse me. How bad? How many survivors? Oh, 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 Florence? 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 Shirley? Oh, yes, Doctor. You're breaking me out of the bed again. Uh, but there's a new box of live balls in the pool, too. That's what we saw in the middle. Hang on a second. She's flatlined. She's gone. Oh, my God. Everything's ready at the Forensic Institute. What do we have? 119 bodies. 11 still unaccounted for. We managed to identify 30 because they still had their wallets or whatever. I sent that list over to Delta so they can start notifying next again. Well, we better start getting them off the concrete before they cook. It was over 100 here today. The, the concrete holds heat and then lets it out slowly. Transportation coming? Refrigerated trucks, and seafood coming. Only ones I could find. Good God. This is a nightmare. Florence? Where's my Florence? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything yet? Florence Siegel is listed as dead. That was Delta. Her body's already been identified. We can't tell him. Mrs. Thompson, we don't yet have a confirmed passenger list. We don't even have a complete list of survivors. When will you? Tomorrow. Maybe. See, 
I've got four young children at home who are going to be asking about their daddy. What do I tell them? We'll let you know as soon as we know. I'm so sorry. Would you like to sit down and wait? I really can't, sir. What about some of the other We really have nothing right here. Well, you can check over at uh, Irving. Irving Community. They have some. I can, but they don't. They're not saying anything. What about We're looking for my sister-in-law. She was on that plane. Her name is Howard. Sally Howard. Yes, she's my twin sister. Let me check. Oh, wait a second. Uh-huh. Yes, that's right. The doctors are requesting another crew of maintenance ticks. Do you understand? Is this your sister's? She's alive. I knew she'd be here. I was talking to God all the way, and I knew she'd be here. Can we see her? She's in very serious condition. She's in surgery. They expect the procedure to take about four or five hours. But she's alive. God didn't take her from us. She's alive. See me come in empty hand. We have only 18 survivors. Oh, the baby died. Oh, I get the tetanus vaccine you needed. Yeah, there are a lot of folks getting cut up on the debris. You know, I thought this was almost over. It's just beginning, isn't it? Afraid so. How do you tell them, Beth? How do you tell them there's not enough left of their loved ones to even identify? They're handling things pretty well for now. <laughs> what about later? Yeah, you're right. We take care of the physical injuries, but they have to deal with the emotional ones from now on. I mean, no one comes prepared to accept a thing like this, not even us. Let me ask you something, Beth. How do you handle this on a daily basis? It's my job. I'm fine, sweetheart. I'm fine. I just, I just got a few little cuts and bruises, that's all. I was so lucky. I was so lucky. Jim, we saw you on television. It was unbelievable. I mean, one minute I heard about the crash. I can't tell you what went through my mind. And then the next minute, there you were, helping save people. We were so proud and happy. There were bodies everywhere, Marie. I couldn't hear anything. It was raining so hard. I just kept saying to myself, thank God, thank God. I was so confused. 
I just started to wander away, and then I realized I was okay, and there was lots of people that needed my help. Delta's flying me into Dallas tonight. Honey, I can't wait to see you and hold you. You do me a favor, sweetheart. You sit at the back of the plane, all right? Okay. I love you. Bye. In Dallas, please. The number for Parkland Hospital. Dr. Khan, Dr. Ethan Khan. Okay, let me give you a hand. Thank you. Are they making you buy your own drinks? No, no, they just. Ran out of diet soda. They sent out for more, but we didn't want to wait. Thank you for your help. Did you, uh, did you have family on the flight? No, no, no. I'm just here to see if I can be of any assistance to those who did. How? are notorious for trying to shortchange survivors. Now, whether your loved one survives or not, you are due restitution. You'll need representation. Delta seems to be doing the best that they can. Well, of course. It's worth a lot of money to them to keep you friendly and happy. They know they're open to suit, so they're scared. They're trying to be extra nice to you. It's not a certain level of freedom that have to Look, please, call me if you want to talk about this. If I stay here, there's going to be a scene. There's a lot of grief in this room, and that wouldn't be right. Anything happened while I was gone? She's still in surgery. body of a woman killed in an auto accident. Okay. What's all this? Lord, they're from that air crash. I can smell the jet fuel. There's over 120 of them so far. Need an extra hand? You should get in trouble with your boss. No, 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 no. I'm the boss. Who else works on Friday night? We sure would appreciate the help a lot. May I help you? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm looking for the family of Sally Howard. Oh, yes, the Smiths. They're the family at this table. Uh, excuse me. My name is Bob Sonnenmaker. I, I was wondering how Mrs. Howard is doing. Do you know her? Well, sir, 
I'm the one who found her out there. Thank you. No, that's not why I came. I'm just concerned. How's she doing? Please sit with us. I'm Bob. What's your name? Hi, I'm Todd. Todd, how are you? Bob, I'm Clint. I'm just so afraid. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson. Your husband is alive. He's at Parkland Hospital with just minor injuries. We'll take you right over there. I knew he'd be all right. <laughs> I knew it. So badly burned, oh my God. Doctor, be honest with us. Nick has second and third degree burns over 80% of his body. It's not good. We're doing everything we can, but his chances of survival are very slim. I'm not sure he'll live through the night. Rescue work is now finished. Officials from the National Transportation Safety Board and their teams of investigators are now taking over. Their purpose is to conclusively determine the reasons for the crash so that something can be done in the future to ensure that a disaster like this one never reoccurs. Mr. Wilson, a pilot and witness to crash has been quoted as saying, had those water tanks been subsurface, there probably wouldn't have been any deaths at all. Do you agree with that? No, those tanks were in an area well away from the runways, according to prescribed criteria. Listen, there were two fully fueled jets on runways just beyond the water tanks and a warehouse. It's not inconceivable that this catastrophe could have been worse. Is it too early to determine what caused the crash? Wind shear is one of the possibilities we're exploring. It's a very rare and drastic change in wind speed and direction. Isn't there instrumentation available to predict wind shear? DFW is equipped with it, and an alarm did go off. Unfortunately, in this case, the microburst seems to have set off the alarm system about the same time the plane crashed. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. I'll let you get back to your work. Just heard Mr. Charles Wilson of the National Transportation and Safety Board cite wind shear as one of the possible causes for the crash of Delta Airlines flight number 191. We'll get back to you with more details as they become available. Miss Kaiser, we're going to take you directly to the Sheraton here at the airport. Is there any word yet? Not yet, I'm sorry. Has anyone found and notified my sister yet? I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, please wait. We're trying to move the press away from the gate. I have to get to the hospital. We'll get you there. My wife is in Parkland. They say she's hurt real bad. We have cars waiting to take everyone where they have to go. Please be patient. <laughs> How many we ID'd so far? Well, 26, as it stands right now. And the rest of them? It'll be time consuming, but most of them we should be able to ID. How? Oh. Billfolds and wallets, licenses and photos. 
two boys had their names sewn into the backs of their underpants. Probably on their way to summer camp. Probably. It's been 24 hours now since Delta Flight 191 crashed here at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. The death toll has reached 133. 14 more lie in local hospitals fighting for their lives. And 17 others sit today thanking God and struggling to understand why they were allowed to walk away with only minor injuries. The grief here in Dallas is tremendous and widespread. It is shared by people from Florida to California, people of all walks of life. On behalf of all of us here at Channel 6, I want to wish a speedy and full recovery to all the survivors and extend our deepest sympathy to those families who lost loved ones in yesterday's disaster. I don't think I can get on another plane to fly home. Maybe we should walk. Settle for a slow bus ride. I feel guilty. <laughs> for surviving? Don't. I feel grateful. Immensely grateful. And sad for those who didn't survive. Oh, I heard another passenger say it wasn't luck that saved our lives. It was divine intervention, the will of God. Maybe. <laughs> By us. <laughs> There's no way to foresee a tragedy like this. There's no way to affect the outcome. It just is. It just is. Rabbi. I'm sorry if I'm disturbing oh, you. Oh, no. Come in. You know my coffee. <laughs> Rabbi, come in. Come in. Nice to see you. Would you like some coffee? Ah, no. Thank uh, you. Please, sit down. Sit down. Oh, I'll, I'll fix some coffee. No, really. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Well, I have a favor to ask of you. There are a lot of people in this hotel who have lost loved ones in the crash. We know. They point at us, look at us, as if to say, how come you lived?
come you just walked away? I'd like you to talk to some of them. Sit with them, it'll help them. And it'll help you too. He's doing better. His vital signs have improved dramatically. I knew it, I just knew it. It's more than we expected. But I want you to understand that severe burn cases like your son's are often tricky, sometimes unpredictable. That's what you said last night. They might not pull through, but he did. Doctor, he's gonna be all right. Well, he's a fighter, your son. It's gonna be a long, hard road, but uh, I think you can make it. Step this way. Have you found her yet? Is Florence okay? I want to see her. It'll be all right, honey. It's gonna be all right. Thompson, this is Delta Airlines. <clears throat> we regret to inform you that your husband has been confirmed as a fatality on our flight 191. We would like for you to come to the Dallas Fort Worth Hilton Hotel to meet with Delta. When's Daddy coming home? This is my son. You recognize him? Did you see him on the flight? No, I, I'm sorry, we didn't. So what did the two of you do? Just run off and leave everybody else to die? No, we didn't. Grief often turns to anger. Don't direct it at them. They may have survived, but believe me, they also feel pain. Please, just want to know one thing. Did they suffer? It, it was over in seconds, less than seconds. We, we felt a bump, and then another bump. Marilyn and I grabbed onto each other, and, and then suddenly, boom, everything was on fire. Oh. <laughs> When we opened our eyes, we were outside in the rain. It was pouring. Quiet. There was no screams, no shouts. Just quiet. And the wind, a hot, humid wind, so what gives you the right to stand there and ask us to feel sorry for you? Why isn't she alive instead of you? Why? <laughs> Do 
We're gathered here to say goodbye and pray for the soul of our dear friend, William Mayberry, loving husband of Terry Dale McKay, adoring father of Barbara and William Jr., the pride of his uncle, Daryl Price, and beloved friend to many of us. We now must accept what has happened and trust in God whose wisdom is beyond our understanding. Why God chose to take William Mayberry from us on the evening of his 28th birthday, we may never know. But we must accept it. And with God's help, maybe someday we will understand. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Can you tell us something about your nephew, William Mayberry? Bill was a good man. It's really hard to bear something like this. He was just driving home when this freak accident happened. It happened to me, to anyone. It just goes to show when it comes your time. It comes your time. He was, he was a very talented mechanic. Many times he worked long hours just so he could support his family. He was strong-willed and he had a lot of ambition. He was good to his family. Even though he didn't want to, he, he went to Texas. He was looking for something to make a better life for his family. And then this. Some families just have to bear more burdens than others. Excuse me. The tragedy of Delta 191, which claimed 137 lives, shook the nation to its core. 
by 1992 jet airliners in this country will be required to be outfitted with airborne wind shear detection devices. And in the summer of the same year, the first ground-based Doppler radar will begin guarding major U.S. airports. Hopefully, these preventive measures will successfully ensure that wind shear is never again the cause of an aviation disaster. Stay tuned. Next on True Entertainment, The Waltons. Alternatively on True Movies 1 and The Sea Will Tell, Part 2. And on True Movies 2, Mistaken Identity.